Welcome to Fitch Painting and Repairs Garage. Here's our little surprise today's project. We have found some barn fresh finds, some vintage machines. This is um, titled as a 1963 Triumph. Um, it's not all original. As you can see, the front end's a little long. Seat's not original. Front fender's been bobbed a little bit. Z bar is on it. <coughs> as far as I can tell, this particular machine has not run. Oops, sorry about that. Has not run since 2014. Underneath that bolt is a 1-4. She is barn fresh. They do not run. And uh, did a little looking into this one already since it's up on the lift already. Uh, the tank, of course, is not original, but uh, this is a plastic Sportster reproduction tank, and it's cracked on the bottom. It leaks, and I'm hoping, you can see here how the fuel ran down this cylinder, I'm hoping that this is the reason this machine doesn't work. Uh, of course, it doesn't have battery in it either, um, and this is the tachometer showing... 25,916 miles on this. I'm not sure if those are original. Title says otherwise. Um, done a little bit of looking on this thing. And uh, the engine's not original to the frame, unfortunately. This one is a 63 frame in configuration with a 1966, I believe to be a recase possibly and uh, i'm suspecting that but i'm not certain i have to really look into it but it doesn't have the timing plug hole in it and i've understood that the early ones didn't have that and possibly the uh reproduction or replacements didn't have it and um these were all sent from overseas disassembled and the dealerships had to assemble them and it doesn't have the raised boss on the cases um but so i'm i'm hoping this is original and um it doesn't have that timing hole so according to the serial number on the motor that is a 66 and it's a tr6ss I'm not going to give you the rest until later on, but as from what I understand, it's a 66 motor on a 63 frame with a custom longer front end on it. Believed to be a stock front wheel. I'm not 100%. Rear wheel, I believe to be a stock rear wheel, shock frame. And I have the original tank. I don't know if it's the original to the machine or you know close to the same year I'm hoping one of those two is the original tanks to it those are both Triumph tanks um, I believe that that is the seat to it actually that one right there that one I believe is off of a CB 750 and I picked that up also in the purchase of this machine here and I also got another bike so I got three motorcycles one was a 79 CB 750 uh, mostly all there original condition not running uh, the bike had been left outside and um, it's missing the brake calipers and all that so I've got a little more paperwork to do on that one to finalize um, but uh, got a bill sale and everything and that one was actually a gift and so we might end up taking that one off to the salvage yard but we're gonna look into it and uh, you know maybe use it as a training aid and let my girls learn how to wrench on some bikes so if it's just a scrap machine or whatever we're gonna bring it back eventually throw it on a lift and uh, this summer since the girls last day of school is today they're gonna have projects to do and that's why I picked this up so I be stay-at-home dad work on a project um, and the other machine that came in the package deal and uh, the owner of these is uh, unfortunately deceased 
and I was purchasing them through an estate, through a third party, and there sits the other machine. That one there is a custom frame titled as a 1967 Triumph 650. That frame is a 1976 custom frame. We haven't figured out who it is. Uh, that's when it was done. It was a Pennsylvania title, reconstruction title, uh, title originally in 76, according to the placard on the headstock. I don't know if anybody out there is, can see that rear suspension on this bike, but it's built into the frame. And I've heard some old timers say, California Springer, hardtail kind of setup. It's a rigid frame with some springs on the rear axle. And the axle actually runs through the spring block down there. Pretty nifty, cool setup, you know? Um, that tank that's on it, I don't believe is the original tank meant for the bike. And I do have what I believe, you know, looking at the oil tank setup on it. I believe it was a coffin tank on there. And one of the tanks that I got, it is a coffin tank set up with the two pet cocks like on the bike so um, I'm hoping that this tank over here is a solid tank this one here I got to weld the rear tab on to it um, it's got a flush mount cap on it got that center ridge line on it kind of simulates the stock setup so uh, I'm not sure if this one's the original or this one's the original. I have the knee pads on both sides and unfortunately I only have one of the logo emblems on it. Um, I believe the logo emblem for the right side is there and the one on the left was missing or vice versa. I have to pull it down and take a look at it. Um, you know, a typical, you know, normal corrosion inside, you know, nothing that, a, you know, good flushing and, you know, clean out, you know, throw. I'll throw some nuts and bolts or some old ball bearing, you know, some good ball bearings in there, you know, brand new ball bearings and uh, some vinegar, soak the hell out of it and clean it, flush it. And uh, I, I, I'm hoping that the coffin tank is a solid tank and they just wanted a bigger capacity tank or a different look or something. Hopefully that thing doesn't leak and if it doesn't, it's going to go back on that machine. And I possibly might run that tank on this bike unless I can get that one sorted out and fixed and put on there. I guess just gonna see which one looks best on it. Um, that one looks more like the original tank, you know, but it doesn't have that ridge line and the holes in it and stuff like that. So the project. Oh yeah, and I also got um, a whole bunch of exhaust pipes and I believe I have the original two into one header for this machine. Um, from what I understand the SS came with that. Um, the SS means street scrambler from what I understand it's a different configuration um, and from what I understand this one was a British bike this one was American it was an import you know so they would say export it's an ex British export uh, made specifically for the American market uh, from what I'm understanding, you know, just in my preliminary research, and I'm hoping that my followers and new people coming to the channel will, you know, provide their input and uh, educate me a little bit. You know, I'm not a British motorcycle guy. I've never worked on one of these. I've never touched one. I've always been very interested in them. I've worked on Japanese metrics, and I've worked on American machines. So... You know that's where my expertise is so we're going to be learning quite a bit about this machine and the motor and all that i've done some preliminary research on these i did that you know looking into them estimate the value of the machines i i got a fair price for them i wouldn't say i've got a great price for them i got a fair price for them you know so that one i got the original front fender for it i've got uh that king queen seat came with it um, you know the whole front end on it's got a long raked out front end a blue stock front wheel for the correct period running a bigger tire on the back end but I think it's a stock rear wheel but I'm not 100% I really haven't looked into the machine a whole lot I uh, just um, you know rolled the engines over with the Kickstarter 
to make sure the engines weren't seized up you know and listen to it and it sounded like they had good compression so but neither one of them run and that one over there is um, you know it's missing some parts on the left side uh, specifically missing the foot peg assembly the brake pedal and armature and I'm missing that little cover on the electrical box down there and uh, no speedo and tack um, no brake light or anything like that and uh, carburetors aren't hooked up gas tanks not mounted right it's not for it the seat not mounted right uh, the whole entire front end was all loose bolts are all loose in it so it was under you know he was working on it or attempting to work on it or take it apart or something so I'm hoping there's nothing wrong with the primary. I'm suspecting possibly the charging system's bad in it, and that's why they were going into that side. Who knows? Who knows? And seeing as how that the electrical panel box is off and the ignition switch is dangling, I'm kind of suspecting that it's, you know some kind of electrical issue. Either the ignition's shot in it, uh, you know, coils are bad, uh, you know, and all that. Now these b both are running points. I did check under the points cover, you know, to see, and they're both running points, but that one's not running stock um, coil or rectifier in it. It's got a more modern setup on it. So we're going to dig into it. We're going to find this one here is going to be the first attempt to get running because I believe that this one might be more complete looking at it. And, you know, it had a tag on it, you know, so I'm hoping that the individual just, uh, you know, parked it because of hopefully that fuel leak was the issue and so we put a solid tank on it or run a remote bag uh, to get this set up I'm gonna do a little quick clean uh, you know we'll, we'll go ahead and fuel the carburetors and, and tickle them and see if we get fuel flow through the carburetors and if so uh, you know I need to test for spark real quick so I need to go get a battery and put in it I do have I heard online that these little um, scooter batteries come will work it's the same uh, 12 volt and 7 amp hour battery but it's not the right size to fit down in the hole and uh, I have a whole bunch of those electrical scooters and whatnot you know for the kids and so um, you know I can use this for testing and all that you know I just got I don't want to have to redo but I'm probably gonna have to uh, change out the wiring for all that anyways because it's so old so I'll probably just clip them uh, ring I ring, you know, ring terminals off, you know, and put these spade terminals on, you know, male, female. And that way I got a good solid thing uh, because I did hook that battery up once, turn the lights on. And I do have a uh, functioning headlight. I do have functioning taillight brake light. Uh, and I did attempt to kick it over, but did not see any spark whatsoever on the plug. And that's what caused me to open that up and take a look. And yes, it does have points. So maybe the points are froze up, not working properly. Um, I had been schooled on those kind of systems, on American machines and whatnot, you know, but that was a long time ago. So I'm having to go back and refresh my memory and educate myself on the particulars of this machine. I downloaded a service manual. I downloaded an owner's manual. But word of mouth, understanding, and you know experienced people out there want to chime in on this you know please feel free you know so these machines I, i'm going to attempt to get them running i do believe i have enough parts to get them running you know I'm, i gotta go get battery I, you know I might have to change out some electrical stuff you know and whatnot but I've got all kinds of exhaust pipes. I have some brand new ones down there that look like they're specifically like these. So I might you know, have a brand new set. I have the two into one header. I have, I think I have one, two, three, four alternative sets of exhaust pipes. I've got one, two, three, four more gas tanks. That one there is trash. It's plastic. It's cracked on the bottom. I might try to repair it, see if it'll hold. And that gas tank over there. I did get the original seat. Original style. I don't know if it is the original seat, but it's in really good shape. And so, 
if I start digging into these machines and find out that there's a bunch wrong with them, then we might be parting these machines out or selling them whole, you know, you know, as a project bike for somebody else. And I'll move back onto my normal repertoire. But I think we are going to have fun and a lot of frustration along the way. <laughs> you know, all good spirited, man. Uh, so, you know, please share, like, subscribe, pass the word, tell your friends, watch the build. I'm going to try to document it. I'm going to look into getting a better camera, a uh, tripod, some better lighting so that we get some really good shots and angles of this machine. Uh, you know, she's a crusty barn find, man, you know, and the individual lived kind of on a dirt road. Uh, it wasn't a long dirt road, but, you know, look at them. So, yeah. Velocity stacks. It's got good compression, you know, according to the kick kickover on it, you know, and and the clutch plates engage and disengage, and shifts through all the gears. Nothing froze up in the engine. I'm thinking she was parked because she was leaking fuel, and then it just you know that's why he's got these tanks. You know, he got these. You know, these are probably original tanks that he had gotten with the machines or something, and that's supposed to be the replacement for it. But you got a weld, tack weld on, you know, it was tack welded on, but it came loose. So you probably got a really good deal on it. So we'll put that back on and we'll leak test the tank. And if the tank holds, then <coughs> we'll probably put that on there. We're also going to leak test that one over there and see if it holds. It's already set up and got pet cocks and everything on it. So that will probably be the one that we put on there for testing if it holds fuel. Because this one's definitely coming off. And we'll take the seat off. We're going to start going through some of the electronics. <clears throat> but the first thing I want to do is put a battery in it, put some fuel on it, and see if she fires. If she fires, man, awesome. We won't have to do a whole lot to it. But if not, then we will go through it and we will, um, you know, try to fix what's fixable, we'll get the machine going, and then we might offer this up for sale. So I got these two machines. I also got a CB750, I'll have a whole bunch of parts, it's got the whole engine, it's got the body panels, it's got the seat, I even got a, um, a replacement seat, it's in really good condition for it, you know, it's got the gauges, the only thing I think was missing on it was probably some of the electronics, and it was sitting outside, so it's, you know, electronics are going to be questionable anyways on that, um, and uh, the engine, it's got the complete engine, it's got all the carburetors on it, it's got... Uh, no front brake calipers, no rear brake caliper. So, but it's got the rotors, the wheels, the wheels on that machine. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a 79 CB750, man, but those wheels never dull, never tarnish. They are looking pristine. They look brand new on the bike. So, I don't think it was sitting outside for real long, maybe a couple years. The guy had lots of different projects and all, you know, but uh, time caught up to him. And now, you know, Next generation is going to come along, and you know, hopefully, this machine will see some road use again. That's what we do on this project. You know, on the, in our garage, we are in the business of trying to preserve old machines. I'm not looking to restore this. I'm not looking to put it back to factory condition. I'm not looking to do any of that. What I am looking to do is put it back on the road, make it roadworthy and a solid machine, good running machine. And if that's not capable, then it'll come apart. It's not an original machine. As far as I can tell, the numbers aren't anything special. Um, but something to say, the uh, that TR6SS is the Steve McQueen machine. <laughs> the Steve McQueen machine. Uh, and they also call this, what, the Desert Sled? You know, so flat trackers and all you guys out there, props to you, man. I've actually got some family ties to that situation, you know, so uh, through my mother's side, I'm related to the first uh, champion. Uh, Daytona has a plaque or a statue out on the beach of him. He's a family member. So, you know, maybe we'll, uh, you know, dig up some of that history and we'll share it with you guys or some of you guys can reach out uh, if you know more about it than I do. Uh, but I'll be trying to learn so you know the gentleman who owned this you know may your spirit fly with us when we take it for its maiden voyage uh, may you shine down and smile on me when she kicks over and fires 
And, um, you know, if there's hidden problems in it, you know, come to me in my sleep and let me know, man. You know, I'm going to try to do you justice and keep your machines going and keep, you know, some pride in them. And if I do sell them, I'll make sure that they go to the right people, you know, that I don't want to, you know, you know what I'm talking about, people out there, you know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, this ain't an eBay flip for profit situation. This is a respect, you know, and honoring somebody and trying to preserve this machine as it is because, man, somebody loved this machine. You know, it's obvious. It sat in a, in a when I found it, they were parked side by side in an enclosed uh, Florida room. If you guys down here in Florida, you know what a Florida room is. It's an enclosed porch, you know, a bunch of windows, you know. So it was inside, and um, I have some video footage of the uh, the people who were clearing out the house and all that for the estate. I actually moved them to the workshop garage that's adjacent to the house, and that's where I picked them up from. I have a short video of me open, opening the door when I found them sitting there. They are untouched, pristine machines, found just like they are sitting here well the the other one over there i had to do a little tinkering i had to secure the gas tank on it secure the seat you know and the, and the sissy bar and all that you know to make it safe to move it around so you know but this is the you know what it looked like when i found it just like that you know but the tank was just barely on it the seat was just sitting on there and the sissy bar only had like one bolt well, I had two bolts, you know, one on the bottom end here and then one just kind of slipped through the fender and the other side wasn't attached at all. But I went ahead and slapped some bolts and nuts on that and tightened it, tightened the handlebars up uh, and, and secured the tank, you know, so that it wouldn't fall off. I don't want to damage it. Uh, but other than that, you know, they're pristine barn finds, you know, they don't run. The only thing I've done to that one is kick it over. You know, uh, a couple times, you know, I checked it to make sure that she's got good compression. She goes through the gears, clutches hooked up, but it has no brake cables on it or anything like that. No tail lights, uh, no um, odometer, no tack, but the cables are there. So, and the left side controls on the foot controls are missing. So, I'm missing the control arm this nut back here i think the pin that goes through that um and and the arm here and this foot peg assembly so i'm i'm missing foot peg assembly the arm that control arm nut and the pin that slides through so that's all missing off that other machine as well as the exhaust mounts and stuff like that you know and so but otherwise, you know, it looks like it could be brought back to life fairly easy. You know, that one was uh, purchased originally in Pennsylvania. And I believe this, I found this in the shop. I believe that was, you know, the uh, last plate on it when he brought it down here. So, and according to the registration and title transfer that he had done, that was the year he had purchased that machine. So, stay tuned. We'll keep you updated.